a, there's a lot of confusion out there between science and technology. Science is all about discovering how the world works, and technology is all about manipulating the way the world works, making it work more to our liking. Medicine, therefore, is, of course, a branch of technology, much more than a branch of science. But many of the, the acknowledged experts on the biology of ageing are very much basic scientists. They are trying to figure out how ageing works, and their focus, their, their focus is only secondarily on trying to do anything about it. This means that often they are not the most skilled people at understanding how to do something about it based on the tools and the knowledge that we already have. They're more focused on how to find out more for the sake of finding out more. And I think it would be very valuable if society in general understood the distinction between science and technology a lot better than they do. I think the main thing that we have to understand about the difference between science and technology <clears throat> is the different uses of evidence. In the case of science, when you're trying to find out how the world works, what you're doing is testing hypotheses. And it's very, very easy to get misled and to think you know things that you don't quite know and to go down you know, dead-end dead avenues of investigation that won't actually add to your knowledge. And this has led basic scientists in general to work with the most direct evidence that leads to particularly to falsification or evidence for or against particular hypotheses. Technology is not like that at all. Technology is about leaps of faith, really. It's about saying, well, okay, these are the things we know. Maybe if we put all of these particular components together in this particular configuration, we would achieve some kind of um, machine or some kind of system that had a new overall effect. And so, in a sense, there is a scientific hypothesis. The scientific hypothesis is, if we build it, it'll work. Okay. But that's not really the way that scientists use the term hypothesis. And so scientists often don't really appreciate the value of technology or the way the technology is done. They don't really like the idea of leaps of faith, of saying, well, okay, maybe if we put all these things together, it'll work. And that's a very profound difference. I don't think it's a case of scientists needing to see things differently. I think scientists are very good at doing science, and we need basic science, curiosity-driven work, just as much as we need goal-directed technological thinking. What we need, therefore, only is for scientists and technologists to have, if you like, more respect for each other, more appreciation of this fundamental difference of mindset and methodology between the two disciplines. I think about ageing from an intervention standpoint, so I come at it as a technologist, but at the same time, I just I like working on really hard problems. When I was working in artificial intelligence, of course, I was also working on really hard problems. So, really, I work as a technologist more than anything else, but I also have to work somewhat as a basic scientist in the sense that I have to understand in detail what the basis is for confidence in what we think we know about various aspects of the biology of ageing. So for me, it has indeed been a, a process of combining those two skills. Um, however, in coming up with actual new ideas, in coming up with new proposals for how ageing might be controlled using medicine of the future, certainly my engineering and um, technology background from my computer science days has been enormously beneficial.